This is a short presentation on CTI application and ecosystem for digital healthcare. This is the application that people see on their phone. And I'm just gonna give, show you a little bit about the data that we collect within the system. And then I'm gonna show you how we use the data for purposes of analytics, which can be used for the clinical trials. It can be, I'm gonna demonstrate how it can be used for a digital blood bank but it'll give an, a very good overview on the way we collect data, the sort of data that we collect and how it can be visualized, and therefore how it can be used to create a very efficient ecosystem for clinical trials and other similar analytics in the, in the healthcare space. So this is Michael Landau's record, right? We collect personal information. We've got the patient's blood type. The way we do that is we have a card that we, can, we put four drops of blood on the card. Within less than two minutes, the card dries. We check it against the reference cards. We now know that it's O positive, A positive blood. And therefore we now have a, a record for life of that particular person, which can be referenced at any time. We also collect information about medical history of the person. So we collect all the medical conditions, hearing and sight, drug allergies, non-drug allergies, mental health, disability, sickle cell. And this information can then be verified kind of by a doctor you know, to be put into the system. We also collect vaccination records, which is, so now we'll be able to tell you which who was vaccinated when and what, but the system will know all about the vaccination history of the patient. We also collect the vitals of the patient. So here you see the blood pressure, SPO, but the, the system does a full collection of every time the historically kind of any of the, any of the vitals were given. So we've got a complete history, blood pressure, glucose, body temperature, et cetera. And then we've done the same thing with regards to the lab test. So let's take the CBC reading. We'll be able to go and see kind of the last CBC reading and all the individual uh, blood count information, the mono, the EOS, and all this information is, is collected in our system. And then another very important feature is the location. So kind of currently I'm working at a location at 450 Western Avenue. So I'm gonna click for the home location. I click update. And now it's going to bring me to 450 West End Avenue. So we have a physical location of where the system is at. I'm now going to stop sharing this screen. And now I'm going to start sharing the, the, the database screen. So this, in fact, is the a synthetic visual in an Excel format of the different data that we collect. This is synthetic, so it's all been pulled out. We can't show real data. But as you can see here, we have the age, we have the sex of the person, the household ID, kind of the location, mental health, sickle cell. Have they given permission to be blood donors, organ donors, or part of a clinical trial? We have the blood pressure, and we've already created the rules to determine if the blood pressure is high or low. And then we do this for all of the different bloods. So we've got full analytics on all the different medical conditions. And then we also collect the data, so malaria, HIV, blood type. And then as you go forward, let's say liver functions, we do you know, kind of an overall function of, uh, is a person in a decent condition or not, cardiac function, and then vaccinations, what they're being vaccinated for or not. So this takes us now to the visualization of that data. So over here, you can see the 220, 299 people. They're all in this area here called the Wikwe. And if we want to be able to do a sickle, a survey, we want to do a clinical trial, for example, of people with high uh, with diabetes. So we go and identify where's the diabetes tab. So it's here on the bottom right. So you click on the red, which is high. So now you've identified 115 people. And let's, for some reason, kind of say we want to do um, females only. So you can click on the female. And let's say you wanted to do it with a specific uh, age range that you wanted to test the people. You know, kind of, of, of a, you had a certain drug that was good for people from age, women age 19 to 36. So now you've got a group, 26 women, and you'll have all the rest of this information. So you see how quick and easy and efficient it is to be able to go and create, you know, pretty much any sort of a data a clinical trial, and this information is available instantly, and you'll be able to go and check clinical trial, who's agreed to be part of the clinical trial. Now I'm going to give you a quick example of, a, of for the digital blood banking. So with regards to, let's assume that there's a young lady, she's having a baby, she's bleeding, there's no time to go and bring in blood from Kampala, we need to identify if there's a person in her area who's agreed to go and give blood. So let's go and create the, the parish, so the parish over here will be Lagoba. So in Lagoba, so we've identified now how many people are there potentially in Lagoba, 282. Well, we don't want to give blood from somebody who has had malaria in the past six months. We don't want to give blood from somebody who's got, uh, who's got positive um, 
HIV. So we're going to only give from somebody who's negative HIV. We don't really care about if they've got a hearing problem, if they've got a visual problem, that's not an issue. But we don't want to give from somebody who's got hepatitis A or somebody who's got hepatitis B. So, we're, so we've now restricted ourselves to a small group of now 164 people. We also need to make sure they've given permission to be a blood donor. So you've got the permissions for a blood donor. And then we don't want to give blood from somebody who's 80 years old. Let's restrict it to 62. And you know we can't give blood from somebody who's so young either. So let's just go and do you know age 19 to 62. So you're left with a group of 89 people, uh, 81 people that are potential donors. And now let's look at the blood type. So if the woman is as uh, you know needs B positive blood or O negative O positive blood, if she needs O negative blood, she's in trouble. There's nobody there with O negative blood. We may have to you know kind of uh, risk, go and look at some other some other matrix to see if you can find that blood. But if she's O positive blood, suddenly we can identify, okay, there are 30 people with O negative blood. So you know, let's try and keep it from somebody who's a little bit, bit healthier. So there are six people who don't have blood pressure issues. So let's choose either from those six people. And let's say, okay, from these six, we don't really want to give from somebody. We just want to give people with normal diabetes. We don't want to give diabetic blood. So you're down to four people who are potential donors from O positive blood or actually kind of three donors over here. So now we're able to go and contact the three donors and communicate with them and be able, and hopefully we'll bring them in to be able to give some blood to this young woman and save her life. So this is a quick overview of the way CTI collects data. All the data that you saw is only collected by health workers, but it's a whole infrastructure system that we have developed. I hope you find this interesting and be excited to collaborate and work together with us. Thank you very, very much.